Welcome everyone to our pre-placement connect. My name is Sanchita and I am your host for the day, joining you from the Accenture studio. Today we have a few leaders from Accenture who will be joining us virtually at the Accenture Arena. I hope you had a chance to look around our Accenture Arena. Unfortunately, due to the current pandemic, we could not be at your colleges, but fret not. We are here with you to share what's new at Accenture and what we have to offer this year for our future talent, which is you. Here's some good news before we begin. We will continue to hire from campuses this year. Stay tuned for more details about our hiring process, which we will share with you shortly. Now, let's see what we have in store for you today. We have Shakti Kadiresan, who leads Engineering Schools Governing Council joining us from Bengaluru to share the latest at Accenture technology. Next up, we have Forum Sagar, Lead, Human Resources for Capabilities and Inclusion and Diversity at the Advanced Technology Centers in India to talk about life at Accenture. Followed by Rohit Jham, Lead, Campus Recruitment, who will talk about our differentiated offerings for you and our virtual recruitment process. And finally, we'll open the floor for a Q&A round. So please don't forget to punch in your questions in the chat box while the session is live. Let's jump right into our first segment for the day with Shakti to hear more about Accenture. Over to you, Shakti. Hello, everyone. I am Shakti Katresan, leading delivery for Europe market in Accenture's Advanced Technology Center in India. In another month, I'll be completing 13 years with Accenture which has been a remarkable journey in my life so far. Accenture is a leading global professional services company providing a broad range of services in strategy and consulting, interactive, technology, and operations with digital capabilities across all of these services at scale. We combine unmatched experience and specialized capabilities across more than 40 industries powered by the world's largest network of advanced technology and intelligent operation centers. With 513,000 people serving clients in more than 120 countries, Accenture brings continuous innovation to help clients improve their performance and create lasting value across their enterprises. We are the only company with the ability to combine and integrate all these capabilities at scale in an industry context. Our business is managed through three geographic markets, North America, Europe and growth markets. India falls under the growth market spectrum. Before I share more information about Accenture and what we do, let's take a look at a video that would give you an overview about Accenture.
with over 250,000 people serving clients in more than 120 countries, Accenture Technology is the global leader in the most vital technologies today. The technologies that are underpinning the world's accelerated digital transformation and that are critical to growing and rebuilding our global economy, including artificial intelligence, intelligent automation, cloud, security, data, and analytics. Combined with the leadership in software engineering, application management, infrastructure, and on the most pervasive intelligent platforms, such as SAP and Oracle, a massive research and innovation engine of labs and investments, the largest innovation delivery operation in the world, and our unparalleled expertise in more than 40 industries from healthcare to finance to consumer goods, Accenture is at the heart of thousands of businesses driving immediate response and longer term transformation that will define the future. Now, throughout the history, crisis precipitate technology adoption. You've seen that. The COVID-19 pandemic has induced an unprecedented global crisis today. Overwhelmed health and medical systems. Billions of people around the world living under stay-at-home restrictions. Great swaths of industry and commerce shutting down, resulting in disruption of workforces, operations, and supply chains, leaving governments scrambling to respond. These are exceptional times indeed. While the global landscape post-pandemic is not yet known, we are already seeing the societal and economic impact and indications of how it will reshape every aspect of our life, creating a new normal, probably never normal. The challenges that we all suddenly face are enormous and urgent. However, it does provide an opportunity for us to reimagine how we live and work. Overnight, we've seen millions of people turn to remote work using collaborative work platforms, new marketplaces springing up, reconfigured supply chains, rejuvenated call and command centers, innovation fast track, shifts to more digital manufacturing and hyper automation of every kind of process. In the immediate response to the crisis, we are witnessing digital transformation accelerating from years to days and across every aspect of commerce and society with Accenture setting the pace as we emerge stronger. We are outmaneuvering certainty and ensuring we support our clients as we continue to grow. Here are a few examples of how we did it. As India faced a spike in cases of COVID-19, the Indian government wanted to empower its 1.3 billion people with information to reduce their risk of contracting the virus. We, along with Microsoft, work closely with the Digital India Corporation to create MyGov Sati, an AI-powered virtual agent embedded on the government's Self for Society website that provides useful information on the pandemic. The virtual agent now handles up to 50,000 users per day, significantly increasing the government's ability to provide potentially life-saving information to its citizens. We have done similar path-breaking things for many of our clients and governments across the globe as well. Now, at the same time, because of COVID, we do realize that many organizations are reducing their workforces, while others can't fill jobs fast enough. People plus work connect that brings organizations together to help people back to work faster. Created by chief human resources officers from Accenture, Lincoln Financial Group, ServiceNow, and Verizon, this global initiative provides new ways to keep people employed. This People Plus Work Connect is a free online employee to employer platform that enables organizations to quickly identify and fill jobs in locations where there is a need. This eliminates multiple friction points that can extend the time that it takes to fill these roles. This People Plus Work Connect is powered by an analytics-driven platform developed by Accenture, which pulls non-confidential and aggregated workforce information by categories such as location and experience. It gives organizations that have open positions a view into the workforces available to fill those jobs, enabling organizations that have available employees to help their people find new roles as well. Now, what does that future look like? Before the pandemic crisis, we had identified collaboration as being the overriding technology trend driven by cloud, 
data, and AI. And today, collaboration is very much critical to survival. Accenture's technology vision describes human collaboration and the need for digital experiences and the experiential products and services, how artificial intelligence is leaping beyond automation to become a powerful human and machine collaboration tool. Now, moving from the factory and warehouses into the larger world and how maturing digital technologies, scientific advancements and emerging dark technologies, which we call as distributed ledger tech, which is a blockchain, artificial intelligence, extended reality, and quantum computing are the technology building blocks for a company's future. We helped another major food company, Del Monte Foods, very recently by moving 200 servers, including 50 complex SAP workloads, to the public cloud Amazon Web Services in less than four months to realize increased operational agility, streamlined business processes, and improved visibility into IT operations and spend. This is just one example of how we bring the best of Accenture to help our clients, spanning the breadth of our capabilities across cloud and intelligent platforms, including SAP and AWS. Similarly, as part of a tech for good, we help design a virtual home care program, which uses voice and vision technology to improve senior citizens' connections to their community and families. This is more important than ever at a time when seniors are even more isolated in the current situation. Accenture is working on applying extended reality for crisis management, immersive real-time medical diagnosis and treatment, as well as training for them to create these immersive social interactions. Now, let's talk about our advanced technology centers in India. The advanced technology centers we have in India plays a very major role in delivering these technology programs in, with India. We have centers located in Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi NCR, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Mumbai, and Pune, all the major cities in India. India is one of the largest geographies for Accenture globally. Supported by extensive skill labor pool and experienced resources across major industries, and technologies, we solve the most complex technology problems for the world's leading companies and governments. We also help clients across all industries harness the power of technology to innovate, grow, and improve their operations. We also help them to drive innovation and value through the next wave of disruptive technologies. You'll be joining our technology business once you get selected. On joining our technology teams, you will thrive in a digitally driven, innovation-led environment where you can help clients shift to the new using leading edge technologies on some of the coolest projects you can imagine. Professionals in the Accenture technology powers our clients' businesses, providing a wide range of technology services and solutions from legacy to emerging technologies. Our industry business process and technology professionals deliver everything from point solutions to large long-term outsourcing services to complex business system integration, and infrastructure services that span multiple businesses and functions. We deliver on a global scale consistently, reliably, cost-effectively, and to the highest standards. And we are always looking to the next wave of disruptive technologies. Now, you'll also find that we are the largest operations for Accenture globally with approximately 200,000 employees in India. Of all our accomplishments, we take pride in fostering greater performance, diversity, and innovation. We are honored to be recognized for our success as we continue our growth journey. Hope the information I've shared so far was really helpful for you. Uh, see you all soon at Accenture and wish you all the best. Thanks, Shakti. That was indeed interesting to know what's happening in the world of Accenture. Moving on, it's never a dull moment at Accenture. Our people continue to pursue their passion and build their skills as they accelerate their career journey. Let's look at Life with Accenture, the Forum Saga. Here you go. Hello, everybody. My name is Forum, Forum Saga. I spell it with an A, unlike uh, the usual F-O-R-U-M that you, know, you would have otherwise been used to. Simple Girl come from Baroda in Gujarat. 
I'm a mechanical engineer uh, by profession. That is what I chose to do, pretty much like many of you all here. And uh, I'm a mechanical engineer who moved parts, worked on the shop floor, discovered that, uh, you know, I want to do something else now. And then I walked into my MBA. And then I was a consultant for quite some time in uh, HR technology, HR tech consulting. And then I felt my true calling was really, you know, in uh, uh, HR, core HR. And that is <clears throat> where I uh, moved into that. And here I am in front of you today. So uh, really happy to do so. These past few months have been, uh, you know, very unique in itself. Otherwise, I think many of these conversations would have been in person. But, well, um, I don't want to complain about the past six months. I'm hoping that everybody's been safe. Uh, we're all safe taking care. They've taught me, these few past months have definitely taught me some skills and, uh, you know, something new that I've experimented with. I'll tell you what, so um, I don't know if you'll find humor in that, but I'll do planks and hold planks for quite some time. I can hold them now for two minutes, uh, my personal best. I also learned how to play Uno, Rami, cards, a lot of card games, and I used to be terrible at it, but I didn't have much of a choice because my kids were home, we, all were, we only had each other, so what else do you I learned a little bit of gardening and I learned how to operate Zoom and I started doing a lot of video calls with my friends. So in a way, I think I got together with a lot of my friends, even the ones that I had, you know, lost touch with because life took on a post, um, uh, you know, COVID. And I actually thought I found time to, you know, connect with them in person over video, over Zoom. Yeah, so that is, uh, you know, the past six months and a little about me. So a little more about, you know, my story with Accenture or my tryst with Accenture, if I had to say it. I came in here around five, five and a half years back. And I think I was at a similar space where most of you all would be to be or not to be in Accenture. I'm glad I took that decision because I think I uh, got a chance to actually talk to and interact with some of the best talent here. My depth functionally in every space, understanding the business better, the HR function better, you know, technology better. I think uh, a whole new perspective would build. So I'm really glad that I took that decision. And uh, yes, my own story over here has been nothing short of growth in terms of, uh, you know, my own professional development and even personal perspectives. But see, that is my story, right? But I'm sure that you would like to relate a little more to somebody who is, you know, just maybe uh, been your senior by a year or two, a couple of years, and, you know, hear from them about a recent experience when they've come on. So let's spend some time listening to Akanksha, an alumni uh, from college, right, uh, was one of you up till a little while ago, and she has a story to relate. So let's go ahead and watch and hear what she has to say. When I was in college, I was unaware of how an IT company works and the kind of roles available for me as a fresher. Accenture helped me discover so much and more about the world of IT. I grew confident with each and every learning session. I look forward to coming to work every day. I like to start my days early. An action-packed day keeps me on my toes always. Accenture encourages creativity and innovation. I have received many rewards and recognitions till date. All this continuously motivates me to give my best at work. The best part? I got a chance to travel to Europe for work recently. I not only got great client exposure, but was also able to travel across many countries in Europe. It's not just work. I can follow my passion and showcase my talent at Accenture too. If you are looking for a career and not just a job, Accenture is the place to be. So that was about Akansha and her rendition of the whole story, right? What I want to talk to you, and let me predict this for you, what you will experience as you walk into Accenture. The big differentiator for us is the culture of equality. Culture of equality for us is, you know, beyond inclusion. It is, you know, beyond diversity. It's all of these elements coming together. This is a workplace where you actually find acceptance of who you truly are 
we have the widest possible lens in the way we embrace our people right whether you are uh, you know a man or a woman whether you would you know uh, be of a different race ethnicity religion culture generations uh, your abilities all of you all have an equal place over here sexuality sexual orientation and you know let me spend some time talking to you about that the kind of work that we have done in this space has been quite unparalleled so accenture has a name in the market in the industry today as being one of the most favorable places for women having said that is that differentiated no it is all about equal opportunities and equal opportunities by design so we welcome each one of you with all your unique strengths if there is a person with disability the kind of you know enablement that is given the kind of learning opportunities that is given just to make sure that you know all the world is experienced in an equal format we have a lot of our colleagues uh, who would belong to the lgbt community and we have thousands and thousands of allies who you know march up to make sure that you know there is a help and you know there is a community to support all our different uh, uh, you know uh, communities right all different people different generations so um and this is not only in you know uh, something that i'm telling you but even our policies support that so whether it is you know partner inclusions you know specific uh, specific policies that help our returning mothers or you know whatever you know the entire entire spectrum so i think i would really like to invite all of you all to be part of accenture and augment this enhance this further participate in this talking about corporate social responsibility all of us are going to be on board to be part of a larger community that is going to actually help build communities enable communities right and the kind of satisfaction and gratification we walk back with uh you know after doing and contributing to this purpose of you know actually helping and changing the way the world works and lives today i think it is an experience by itself and you know all of you all are welcome to be part of that community you will have ample opportunities to participate in various such programs now let me talk a little more about you know how is it that you know accenture invests in your future accenture actually will empower you to be your best right in a professional as well as a personal front i said that earlier as well we embrace who you are and uh, you know one of the examples over here is you know we have a pre onboard program so for people who are going to join us you know why wait till the day you actually you know get on and sign those papers and you know move on but we are going to you know encourage you to you know pick up what is happening in the technology spaces what is the basic stuff that you need to know you know quite before you on board what we know what we call a pre onboarding program so you know students can actually start learning technology fundamentals right before and you know that's where you actually get your head start right you're going to get a chance to collaborate relentlessly with people it is going to be across various countries you know borders you have going to be the best people who are going to teach you and more right so it is going to be boundaryless go as far as your ambition is going to take you we spoke about learning and now let us see what about passion when you come in you come in with everything that you've learned academically what you will learn professionally and uh, you know what about talents so here is a chance and you know accenture actually gives you a platform to just uh, you know, bring all your talents on board so if you like singing yes uh, you know we not only going to celebrate your singing talents with you we are going to make sure that you have a platform where you know multiple other people also celebrate this with you and in case if like me you don't know how to sing maybe here is an avenue for you to develop those skills also passion is passion and we are here to support it and singing is just an example but all your multifaceted talents are welcome here because you know work and workplaces shouldn't just be you know all about work it is about our whole selves so we'll celebrate that let's take a short uh, look at a short video that we have for you which talks about how we celebrate passion <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, the videos and the conversations that we've brought to you actually give you a sense of you know what is life at Accenture and you know how is it that Accenture can actually help you augment your own professional and personal journey. I mean, after all, we have a world to conquer, don't we? So, really looking forward to meeting many of you, many many of you in the future coming months. Wishing you all the best for the processes ahead. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you, Forum, for taking us through life at Accenture and how we are preparing for future talent to take on new opportunities and build a career at Accenture. Now we have a special show lined up for you. Presenting Rahul Arya, who is an internationally acclaimed sand artist and has been on over seven TV shows and four films. He has even received over 24 prestigious awards and over a million views on life. He has even performed with celebrities in over 1,000 plus live events across the globe. Let us see how Rahul, with his standout form, shows how we are imagining a future with newer opportunities now more than ever. At Accenture, we stand strong with our empowering culture, equality for all, and exceptional talent. We are shaping the future of the industries, our clients, and our people with new opportunities in the new reality. And we are sailing towards success and reimagining possibilities for a bold future. We bring the best talent to Accenture. And our people are our biggest asset. We attract, develop, and inspire our people to ideate, innovate, and excel at scale and at speed. Our inclusive culture empowers us to push the boundaries of innovation to serve clients better and be at the top of our game from the biggest global industry players to small startups our people deliver full-service technology and business capabilities through a powerful ecosystem of market leaders and innovators. Whether we're building custom applications and software solutions, innovating with intelligent platforms, accelerating growth in the cloud, or incubating new concepts in the lab, we're a many technologies company, delivering fit-for-purpose differentiated solutions to clients and 
unparalleled career opportunities for our people. After all, we are no one tech wonder. Also committed to supporting our people in these challenging times. Produced resources, tools, and tips for working remotely. Tools such as a 24 7 employee assistance helpline, online training sessions, and virtual summer camps for their children. Continue to push all gears to accelerate innovation by leveraging our unmatched expertise and specialized capabilities to drive real impact for our clients and society in an ever-evolving world. turning massive challenges into meaningful change and building technology for the strength to succeed. We're imagining a future with limitless opportunities in the new reality by reimagining the possibilities. Now, more than ever, we are Accenture. Thank you so much, Rahul. Here's to a bold future. Now, let's hear from Rohit about our differentiated recruitment strategy and the roles we have for our engineering graduates across the country. Welcome to all of you. I'm happy to know that you have considered Accenture as an aspiration organization to start your career. I'm hoping all of you and your family members are safe and healthy in this unprecedented time. In the next few minutes, we will share the information which will encourage as well as prepare you to participate in the Accenture hiring process. Before I start, let me introduce myself. I'm Rohit Jham. I had campus equipment for Accenture. I wanted to remind that we will be answering all the common questions and doubts at the end of the session. So please feel free to post your questions on the chat window as we go through our conversation and do mention your college name for us to respond better. The question is not answered today, you need not to worry. At another opportunity when we conduct a college-wise open house session for the next few days. So keep looking for all communication from Accenture on the register email ID as well as your mobile phone. Let me start from what we have to offer to young and bright engineering talent who aspire to be the best of technologists in the future. Last year, we introduced two roles and empowered students to choose the role based on their aptitude as well as aspiration. This year too, we continue to bring these two opportunities to our future talent. First role which we are offering is software engineer role. Software engineers will be the one who will be deployed into focus projects and niche skill domain area. Second role, which we are offering in campus is Associate Software Engineer, known as ASC. ASC will be offered to work on varied technologies in new and growing areas of businesses. 
want you to know that this year, there's an interesting change in our value proposition for associate software engineer. This year, talent who get hired at ASC role will get an opportunity to foster their career to software engineer role to advance assessments, as well as oral performance by end of this year, one at Accenture. Isn't that interesting? Let me talk about the compensation about both the roles. Associate software engineer, you will receive a compensation of four and a half lakh, where your fixed pay will be 3.83 lakhs. In addition to that, you will be eligible for a performance-based pay of max 32,500 per annum based on your performance and a one-time joining bonus of 25,000, which will be paid along with your first month salary. The total compensation of 4.5 lakh will also include additional benefits with gratuity and insurance. As an engineer, you will receive a compensation of 6.5 lakh, where your fixed pay will be 5.41 lakh in addition to that, you'll be eligible for a performance-based pay of 84,500 in a performance cycle. The total compensation of 6.5 lakh includes additional benefit with gratuity and insurance. I will now like to share about our selection process. Similar to last year, this year too, our hiring program is open to B, BTEC, and MC student of all streams. Graduating in 2021, and a part of our selective list of qualities. We need to have an aggregate of 65% or 6.5 CGPA and no active backlog at the time of the process, also at the time of onboarding. We allow maximum one year gap in education post 10 standard. A very important change this year in our hiring process is that each and every student who registered to Accenture process need to mandatorily submit PAN card. So if you don't have a PAN card till date, please apply for it now and be ready to submit it at the time of registration. There are more criteria mentioned on the screen. I want you to read all the criteria thoroughly. Now, I'd like you to take you through a complete process video. I'll really encourage you to look at this video attentively. And once you go through the video, we'll talk more about our assessments. Hi there. In this short video, we will walk you through our virtual recruitment process. We hope you will make the most of this opportunity. You will receive emails and SMS notifications at every stage as you advance in our recruitment process. As we conduct our hiring process virtually this year, we have enabled features such as chat, helpline and guides across all stages of the hire process to enable quicker query resolutions. Please ensure that you have read and understood all the notifications and FAQs about our process guidelines. Our offering. This year, we're excited to offer you two roles. We could select you either for an Associate Software Engineer or ASE at Career Level 12 or Software Engineer or SE at Career Level 11 based on your overall performance during our hiring process. Candidates will be notified on their selection only at the end of our zonal recruitment process, unless they are unable to clear or participate in any of our recruitment process. Here's how our process will work. As a first step, you will receive an email from Accenture with details to register online. Make sure you fill all your details correctly. You must submit your PAN card as a mandatory identity proof document. Your registration information, such as name and date of birth, should match your PAN card for us to consider your application. Few important tips while submitting your registration. 1. Ensure your first name is your given name and the last name is your surname. In case you don't have a surname, update it as per your father's or mother's name according to the PAN card. 2. Enter your personal contact number and email ID accurately for all future communication. We suggest you submit details which you would continue to use even once you graduate from your respective colleges. 3. Upload your most recent passport size photograph for identification. Remember, background themes or selfies can lead to identity mismatch. You will be given an option to review and confirm your details before submission. Once submitted, 
you would not be able to make any changes to your details till our process closure. Eligible candidates will receive a QR-based admit card that will be used for identification during the interview stage of our process. Prepare for the virtual hiring process. All our processes will be conducted virtually. Please ensure that you have the following technical requirements ready to participate in our process without interruptions. Laptop or desktop must be enabled with a webcam and microphone. Webcam should capture the image clearly. Both webcam and microphone must be in switch-on mode across all assessments and interview stages of our process. Your system must have RAM and processor, 4GB plus RAM, i3 5th generation 2.2 GHz or equivalent or higher. Operating system, Windows 8 or 10, Mac OS 10 10.9 Mavericks or higher. Google Chrome browser with latest version, version 5. Network VPN or proxy should be disabled. Stable internet connection of 2 Mbps plus enabled through broadband connection. Do avoid unstable 3G or 4G networks. For taking the communication assessment, it's highly recommended to use a USB-enabled headset with a microphone or a good quality headset with single jack, 3.5mm having microphone. Students must avoid using Bluetooth headsets or using on-system speakers and microphone. Remember, don't carry or use any electronic devices such as mobile phones, calculators, smartwatches during your assessment process. If found to violate these guidelines, appropriate action can be taken, leading to even disqualification from our recruitment process. Ready, set, go! Your assessment begins. The first assessment will be the Cognitive, Technical and Coding rounds. You will receive an assessment link with your unique login credential to log into the test. This assessment will be scheduled in two stages, which must be completed within the specified time. Stage 1. Cognitive and Technical Assessments You will get 90 minutes to complete this assessment. Cognitive assessment includes 50 questions on English ability, analytical reasoning, numerical ability. Technical assessment includes 40 questions on common application and MS Office, pseudocode, fundamentals of networking, security, and cloud. You are required to meet the section and subsection cutoff from each assessment to be considered for further rounds. Upon completion, you will have 5 to 10 minutes relaxed time before the results are notified. Do not close the browser till you are notified on assessment closure. Upon clearing cognitive and technical assessment, you must participate in stage 2, which is a mandatory coding assessment. Our recruitment process will end here for the students who don't clear cognitive and technical assessment or fail to participate in coding assessment. Coding assessment will have two questions, which must be solved using any one of the following languages as per your choice. C, C++, .NET, Java, Python. The duration of this assessment will be 45 minutes. Your performance in coding assessment will be considered for our overall selection at a zonal level. The next round is communication assessment. You will receive a separate email with timelines and login details to participate in this assessment. Communication assessment is a verbal test which will assess you on the below parameters. Sentence mastery, vocabulary, fluency and pronunciation. The duration of the assessment is approximately 20 minutes. You will now proceed to the last stage of the recruitment process, the interview stage. Before the interview, you will receive a notification to select a preferred slot for participating in your interview discussions. Upon confirming your slot, your interview details will be notified to you via email and SMS. You will be interviewed by two panelists from our team. The duration of your interview is approximately 30 minutes. You are expected to be available 30 minutes prior to your confirmed interview slot. Don't forget to carry your admit card for participating during our interview process. Please note that the information on your admit card and government ID proof will be verified. 
all the hiring rounds of our process will end here. Students who fail to participate or are found to involve in any fraudulent or misrepresentation acts in any of the stage across the process will be disqualified from the recruitment process. Once Accenture completes all processes in your zone, based on your overall performance, students will be shortlisted for ASE or SE roles and will receive a letter of intent if selected. Check your emails and register on the tool to get started. Good luck! As we all know that virtual interaction is the new normal for all of us. Therefore, Accenture 2 will be offering their entire hiring program virtually. This experience for all of you. This year, our entire assessments will be done in various zones, and I will talk to about zones in a while. I have seen in the video, our assessment will be ad administered in three stages. First stage is the 90 minutes of MCQ assessment of cognitive and we get 90 minutes to do to complete 90 questions and remember you need to meet the minimum cutoff which has been set up for the 90 minutes assessment for each and every section our hiring process will end here for those students who do not meet the minimum threshold required for each of the sections of the 90 minutes question for those who clear minimum threshold our next assessment will be going remember Participating in coding assessment is mandatory. The coding assessment consists of two coding problems. You can solve the coding problem using any one programming language of your choice. But students who do not participate in coding assessment, candidates who have cleared our minimum threshold on cognitive and technical assessment and have also participated in coding assessment will now receive notification to participate in our third assessment, which is communication assessment. When you receive email from Accenture to participate in communication assessment, please read all the guidelines which is mentioned in your email to take the assessment. A very important thing to take communication assessment is that environment in which you're taking the assessment should be noise-free. Also, please read the guidelines on the headphone and other IT infrastructure required to participate in the assessment. Just want to reiterate that please enable yourself with all the necessary logistics participate in the entire Accenture assessment process. And also do not miss to read any email communication which comes to you on the timeline timelines of the entire assessment process for your soul. And once you complete communication assessment, you will receive notifications from Accenture for the final round of the process, which is interview. Interview will be conducted virtually and you need to enable your video to participate in interviews. Interviews will be Two is to one, which means there'll be two people from Accenture who will be interviewing one candidate and the interview slot will be approximately of 15 to 20 minutes. Now, quickly, just to recap here once again, in order to ensure that you don't have any technical issue, we will be setting up a tech support, which will do live chat, to helpline and FAQ to address your queries. So if, if you're facing any technical issues, don't worry escalate it to the support center. You'll be receiving email from us on each stage with guidelines and timelines of the assessment to ensure that you track all your emails and SMSs. Thirdly, you will have access to the FAQs and various process guides which will be available to you on the platform which you'll be accessing. Peer through those video guides and get access to all the information. Now let me take you through the timelines as well as dates of hiring events. So today's pre-placement connect is the first step in the process. One or two days after pre-placement connect, we'll be triggering a communication to you to participate in our assessments. We'll also conduct open house to address your doubts or questions. And this open house will be by college. So you, that's a possibility for you to get all the queries addressed. It's possibly you can get addressed in the pre-placement talk. The candidates will get approximately one day to two days based on the number of students in the college to complete the cognitive, technical, as well as coding assessment. So exit start date and end date for this process will be notified to you by email. Candidates who clear cognitive and technical assessment and also participate in coding assessment, okay, next communication will be triggered is communication assessment. And again, 
start date and end date to participate in this assessment will be communicated to you via email. Third stage and final stage is, as I mentioned to you, is a virtual interview. So virtual interviews will be happening in batches, college-wise, which will be spread anywhere between one day to three days, depending upon the total number of students who are eligible for interview. So please keep on looking at the email communication, which will have a specific time allocated to you for your interview. Now, the wait ends here. Once the events are over for a particular zone, we will announce the result by 11th day for that particular zone. Remember, once again, selection of talent will be happening at the zone level. So you're not competing with your, with your fr friend and your colleague in college. Okay? You are competing with other talent at the zone level. We're talking about, cert about certain very important note, which we communicate to each and every student who participate in our executive hiring process and get selected. Once you are communicated about your selection, you will get three days to accept the letter of intent from Accenture. All further communication on document submission or releasing detail of a letter will be initiated only to those candidates who accept the letter of intent in three days. In ensure that you are keeping a tap on your email and SMS communication so you don't miss the timeline and deadline to accept the letter of intent. Before we release the offer letter, we do take your location preference for joining the Accenture location, but we expect all selected students to be really flexible because getting a work location is based primarily on the business requirement. And we also try to match individual preferences, but business requirement is will be the more priority. Also, not only for the location of the choice, but also the joining timeline. Right? The joining timeline too will be staggered based on business requirement. Lastly, one of the most important notification for you. Accenture has not authorized any agency or individual or company to collect money to offer a job at Accenture. So if you're approached by any individual who demand money and offers you a job at Accenture, don't get lured. Please send the details to us at the business ethics line that what you see on the screen below and help us prevent any kind of fraudulent practices which exist in the market. On that note, I wish the best for each of you and now open the forum for live questions and answers. Please feel free to post your question in the chat window and do post your college name for us to respond to better. Thanks, Rohit. To all of you out there, the future holds exciting new possibilities for you at Accenture. With that, we have reached the end of our session. But we're not done just yet. It's time to seek answers to your questions. Drop your questions in the chat box and get your answers right away. that will be given at all levels um, there is a lot of investment and commitment that comes from your side and the way you present yourself in those situations depending on the way opportunities present themselves to you i think the decision will be made based on that um sam back to you thank you very much Nito. and rohit would you want to add yeah. anything Oh, yeah, I just, yeah, I just add to what Neetu said. So you start your career with Accenture with a very strong foundation in application of technology, skill, and platform. Uh, as I mentioned in, uh, earlier in my video, uh, you could be joining Accenture either as a software engineer or associate software engineer. This year, for the candidates who are joining as associate software engineer, we have launched a fast track program where through assessments throughout their time, uh, one year of their tenure, first one year of their tenure, and also during their performance year in the first year, you will get opportunity to move to SC level based on your performance. Okay. So the first few years, 
or rather say the first 12 months, Accenture focus on your foundation skills and also focus on enabling the entire learning environment for you. That would mean you focus on your coaching, you focus on uh, ensuring that you have good interpersonal skills, presentation skills, uh, you have good project management skill, uh, time management skill, and you stay fully engaged and motivated uh, to perform your role either as ASC or NSC. Thank you, Rohit. And Rohit and Rakesh, again, that's a question on the tool. Uh, during the presentation, we heard about uh, ACP. Uh, so that term is new to us. Can you throw us some light on what, what that is and what, what are we required to do uh, with respect to ACP? Sure, Sam. So let me take that. Um, so as far as SAB is concerned, uh, which is Safe Examination Browser, um, it's a mandate uh, for all of us to install the browser to participate in the process. This link will be shared with you at least a week in advance through email notification. Uh, along with the notification, you will also receive a uh, guideline uh, on how, how, do you, how do you go about installing SAB to read through and follow these instructions. Right. You also need to ensure that your desktop and laptop is compatible and does not have any firewall limitations to restrict SCB installation. Right. Uh, so do install the application well ahead of your participation in our assessments. Sam, back to you. Thanks. Thanks, Rakesh. And um, Neetu, here is a very interesting question. And um, this question goes like, how is Accenture coping up with this pandemic situation? Probably if you can throw some light on what are the measures that we have taken for our employees. And uh, I'll request Rohit and Rakesh to add on, uh, what did we do for onboarding uh, our last year campus recruits and also how do we manage their training and opportunities uh, through the GFT? Uh, thanks so much, Sam. I'll go first. Um, so being part of delivery, you know, I can always say that it's pandemic is another situation. And to begin with, right, Accenture in any given situation where it needs to support employees, I have been part of it and I have experienced the kind of support that Accenture gives. Now, specifically for the pandemic, what I would say is uh, in the delivery team. So I particularly handle, like, say, around 1,700 people in the delivery you know, mode. Now, the moment the pandemic button was pressed and then, you know, we struck, we ran into that situation, the first thing that we did was to make sure that all our employees are safe and secure. Now, what does that mean? So, which means that ecosystem in which that they are is pretty much safe. Whatever guidelines have to be defined in terms of measuring their safety and security is identified. And then, and at the same time, while we are taking care of our employees, we also needed to ensure that our business wasn't impacted. Our clients were also feeling pretty comfortable and confident that their business was running as usual. So the, the way we address this was we actually equipped the employees in their homes with laptops or desktops, which means we physically moved the laptops or desktops. And given the India conditions where, you know, we might run into a situation of um, disrupted power cuts and then, you know, any sort of uh, environmental disruptions, we provided UPS, we also provided data cards, additional data cards. We also enabled, ensured that their mobility, uh, I mean, their uh, Wi-Fi bandwidth was enabled. We also ensured that their mobile phones were also equipped, you know, for, for any conferences or anything of that sort that might be needed with the clients or anything. You know, wherever, whatever we did was defined in the Accenture norms given by the security guidelines, given by our delivery guidelines, keeping in mind our client guidelines, etc. So all of this put together was planned like pretty much in a day or two, right? So from March 18th to March 23rd was what the timeline that was given to us. And that was an extremely short period to make sure that at least 90 to 95% of our population was getting equipped with all of this. And all of this was arranged, keeping in mind people reached to their respective hometowns or also safely, right? In certain cases, we made arrangements to make sure that they were put up in hotels before they could reach their hometowns. You know, it was all the facilities were taken care of, uh, their environments and ecosystem, everything was taken care of. And what we do post that, right? That was just the start of the journey in the pandemic nature, right? What we did through the journey was also to make sure that, you know, some helplines were opened in case anybody ran into a situation, wanted to get more guidance on the COVID kind of situations, any sort of, you know, uh, 
uh, online doctors that are being made available so anybody can just approach to say hey uh, do i have the ability to reach out to any hospital at need so those tie ups are also there right and this is all keeping in mind priority being employee safety and security right and then our clients are also pretty appreciative in the way we have partnered with them in the way we have also coached and guided them in terms of how we can drive their business effectively through the adoption of uh, digital and cloud and you know multiple things that we will talk about during the course of the session but then keeping the focus in terms of how accenture has addressed pandemic especially for employees i think these are the few things that we have done and we continue to do and enhance as we move along right and as we discover and learn from various situations. situations sam back to you i just add thanks to the two said yeah. uh, uh uh the employee wellbeing is our utmost priority in the current time in addition to what need to mention that we have also enabled the wellness program uh which we call under program for all our employees and we have also covered our employees under under covid employee insurance benefit plan so there's a additional health benefit which we provided to our employees uh engineering students uh, who are your seniors from 2020 batch we enable the entire joining virtually for them we also launch the entire virtual pre onboarding learning program so that they are well equipped and they get ready uh for the role for which they are joining accenture so we enable the entire virtual learning program we en- and also enable the entire infrastructure uh post the joining accenture so we have taken full good care of uh of the seniors who joined us started joining us from uh, for graduating in 2020 thanks neeta and rohit i i think this de- detailed explanation on this question uh, speaks volume of our readiness to uh, handle uh, this adverse situations the next question from divya right i still haven't received my registration link so who do i reach out to uh, probably i will pick this question so uh, divya to answer your question so if you have not yet received your uh, registration link i would request you to check in get in touch with your placement officer uh, verify the email id that has been uploaded on the tool if there are any changes to that request him to notify the, our campus recruiter so we will we'll get that corrected on the tool and resend the registration links to you also note that if you would want to change that email id to any other email id or change your contact numbers all all the details that you are uh, your placement officer uploaded on the tool is editable except for three fields which is your college name your um, degree and your year of passing all other details personal to you can be edited while you complete registrations uh, so rohit would you want to add anything to this point to sam you have right and uh, so any student who is uh, yet not got registration information uh, please check that a you are eligible as per the accenture defined recruitment process and if you are eligible please reach out to your training placement office to ensure that you get registration link from accenture to participate in accenture process thank you rohit uh, so the next question i think uh, is more on the tool so i request rakesh and rohit uh, to pick that up uh, so there's a question coming in from amit uh, who's questioning like are we expected to appear all the assessments right the cognitive technical coding and communication assessments on the same day uh, if if so would we get a uh, time in between between the modules sure let me pick it up uh, and then roit feel free to add um, so let me just take you through the recruiting process a little bit you you saw it in the video as well Uh, and in just adding to what you saw in the video you know um, so in terms of our recruiting process it's a three stage process uh, the first one being cognitive and the technical assessment uh, you will get about 90 minutes to complete the same cognitive assessment includes questions on english ability analytical reasoning numerical ability etc technical assessment includes questions on common applications ms office pseudo code fundamentals of networking security cloud Uh, upon the completion of cognitive and technical assessment you will get 5 to 10 minutes of uh, relaxation time uh, or so called a break right there after if you have cleared the assessment you will have to proceed with the coding assessment now these three assessments will be done 
in one day, in in a certain set of hours, which will be allocated to you uh, for for the completion of the assessment. Thereafter, once you have completed the cognitive and the technical assessment and the coding assessment, the next day is when you will be again allocated a slot to complete your communication assessment. Now, as far as your communication assessment is concerned, uh, it's a verbal assessment wherein you will be assessed on various parameters like sentence mastery, vocabulary, fluency, and pronunciation. So, so that's that's the framework, and and this will not be done on the same day. Uh, cognitive, technical, and coding assessment will be day one, and basis you clearing these three assessments is where your communication assessment will happen on day two. Sam, back to you. Thank you. Thanks, Rakesh. Uh, Neetu and Rohit, there is a question on uh, the mandate of coding. So. Uh, Sonali from uh, CBIT has a question like, why is coding mandatory? Last year, we understand that was an optional round for a, a higher compensation role, but this year, uh, it's it's kept as mandatory. Okay. Um, I will go first on this uh, because I will share my experience from a delivery standpoint. Now, over a period of time, what we have learned is uh, see, the market is changing, and in this dynamic nature uh, that we have, right, we have to constantly keep upskilling or upgrading ourselves to actually meet the market conditions and ensure that the client requirements are being met, right? So, unless that balance is struck, it is very difficult for us to actually deliver our jobs and deliver our jobs quickly because that's the need of the hour. Now, in a situation where, in a, in a situation like this, where we are absolutely, you know, in a digital mode, for example, and then we are I mean, we have to thrive on certain skills and acknowledgements that are there for us to be able to proceed further and still remain competitive in the market. And today's need is those coding skills are absolutely necessary for us to get 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 rolling on the ground as fast as possible, right? That's one of the important reasons from a delivery standpoint that I see that coding is mandatory because if you don't come back with that skill or if you don't have the analytical and the logical knack to be able to code and deliver, it will make it absolutely difficult or challenge for you to be able to cope up with the kind of jobs that we are going to be deployed in. So that's one of the reasons that that's the primary reason, as I would say, that is absolutely necessary to say why some of these skills have become prerequisites for us rather than saying that, oh, we will learn on the job over a period of two years or three years down the line. So that is the speed at which things are changing in the market. And if we have to stay relevant in this industry, if this is the industry for us, wherein we are going to be making a career, a growth path for ourselves, then, you know, these things are absolutely necessary. Over to you, Sam. Thank you, Nito. Uh, so, another question from Smitha. Like, are we permitted to use pen and paper during cognitive assessments? Uh, maybe Rakesh, would you like to take this question? Sure, yes. Uh, so, you are allowed to use the pen and paper as needed. Right, but you will not be allowed to use any other technical gadgets like calculators, smartwatches, uh, or any other device apart from your computer on which you are appearing for the assessment during those assessment slots and then when you are live with the assessment. So I'm back to you. Thanks, Rafal. Rakesh. Uh, the next question comes in from Prabhat. Uh, and maybe uh, Rohit, you can pick that up. When can we expect our joining so we understand that the batch of 2020 is getting on board or, or partially on board till now mm -hmm. yeah. there are three very important things for you to be eligible for joining accenture the first thing is that your examinations need to be completed and your results should be available okay. second thing is at the time of onboarding you need to meet the eligibility criteria which we have defined we at the time of applying uh, or sitting in the exchange process. Okay. Third uh, criteria for us to decide onboarding is the business priority. Okay. Now, based on all the three information available to us and also based on the business priority, the joining is staggered over the period of time. All the candidates who accept offer from Accenture, from the day you accept the offer until you onboard, we will have an ongoing engagement with you. We will stay connected with you with all the relevant information you need to know 
which will not only make you industry ready, but also information critical for you to be ready to onboard Accenture. So we'll stay connected with you through that information and we'll uh, share uh, uh, communication regularly with you on your joining date. Thanks, Rohit. Uh, the next question uh, that we have received is uh, from uh, uh, Tahir Saeed. What type of questions would a mechanical engineering student face in the technical round of interview? Uh, maybe, Rohit, can you put that question? Okay. okay, so there is no technical round of interview. Okay. So you are going through a series of assessment. Okay. Uh, totally cognitive, technical, communication, in the interview stage, they're primarily focused on your competencies as well as your communication skills. Now, for, to give an example of competency, the interviewer will spend approximately 50, 20 minutes to really understand uh, your learning agility. Really understand it, how do you apply learning to your day-to-day -day work environment? How do you collaborate uh, within the teams? Uh, 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 also, primarily focus around, you know, how do you articulate your point of view? How do you communicate your uh, your point of view, uh, which will be really uh, understood by the uh, by the participant or by any of your team member? It's a primary focus more on the competency and communication. There won't be any technical question asked in the interview. Thanks, Rohit. I'm sure that is a very relieving answer to many of us at the event here. Right. And me too, uh, that's a very interesting question. And I, I, I'm sure the best person to answer this question is you. Uh, Lakshma Adala uh, has a question like, when I get to work in technologies like artificial intelligence or machine learning, and uh, there's another uh, candidate, Pavitra Bodu, who is... Uh, can you just to understand what are the different technologies that, and, and programs or languages that Accenture is currently working on? And for a new joiner like us, how do you offer mentorship? Sure. Um, I'll take that up, Sam. Uh, thanks for these questions. I think these are very insightful. And, uh, you know, my response here is probably just a stepping stone or you can get a handle on how it will happen, but then a lot of it happens on the ground. So there are three parts to this question. Will I handle, will I be able to work on AI and ML? Absolutely. The reason being, um, you know, that is the that is the direction that the world is taking. That is the direction that our clients are also enabling us adopt. And that is the direction in which we are also providing solutions quite a bit, right? So that said, um, AI, ML are definitely options, but is that only the ones that you will get to work on? Then the answer will be, might not be, because it, it will come along with the other layers of technologies that you need to learn, equip yourself with, and the more interest you show, the more tended you are towards, the more invested you are in learning and demonstrating those skills you will be mapped to jobs associated with that. That's number one. Now, broadly from an Accenture standpoint, so there are tech visions that are that are built in terms of how Accenture wants to drive the technology roadmap for themselves and for the clients, with, you know, basis uh, various discussions that we're having with the clients and the primary skills that um, we will continue to focus on or where our majority of the focus both at the macroscopic level and the microscopic level is going to be one is cloud. Cloud is a given right now. So that is going to become the order of the day pretty much for all sorts of clients, be it a private, be it public, be it on Google, be it Amazon, be it IBM, you know, so those can vary. So the platforms will vary. Now, the second thing is digital adoption. Immersive adoption. So when I say digital adoption, right from the angular kind of coding to, you know, the digital spectrum of technology skills. So that will be the top priority of skills. Of course, the Javas and the Microsoft of the world, the Avnads, you know, the Dynamic 365, the Office 365, you know, various intra-related security related is going to become primary in the current nature, the way we are embracing the pandemic situation, how we are responding to it. And the more digital we get, of course, security comes along with that. And that is also going to become the natural way of life for us, right? So given all that, uh, the, the direction of technologies that we will take will be more cloud, will be more agile-related technologies, will be more uh, digital-related technologies along with security fact, right? That is the thing. Now, the kind of mentorship. 
Now, we've been talking about this mentorship, right? Right from your AFC days, what is it that you will get to do, the kind of greenfield training. So your greenfield training will also become much more relevant to what the projects will demand, right? what the project requirements are going to be. Now, that said, what happens is uh, your assessments are going to be based on that, your trainings are going to be based on that, your curriculums will be based on that, your project trainings and the kind of mentorship that you have to get from your project will also be more related to the technologies that will be driven in those engagements, right? Now, and, and mentorship, right? It's just not from a technology standpoint. So how you will be groomed as a person in that role, how you will be groomed as a programmer, as a software engineer, as a business analyst. So what are the various roles that you can play that comes to you naturally? So based on that, you will be groomed. And of course, we don't expect that everybody will be, you know, um, a geek from day one. But your commitment to this whole thing, right? So that is what you will be assessed on and that is how, you know, the mentorship will also be given. And the more you remain committed and invested in yourself, then, you know, it, the mentorship will naturally flow into, into your role to say, hey, I'm getting guidance from uh, a lead within my team. I'm getting guidance from a capability that I have been drawn to. I'm getting guidance from a solution factory. So these are various branches that are excelling in their core competencies that have focus skill growth that needs to be there. And then you will be navigated to each one of them depending on your interest level, depending on the project requirements and depending on Accenture as a whole, how we want to move forward. Right? Fun? Thank you very much, Neetu. Uh, Rakesh, there's a question on uh, the logistic arrangements that the candidate needs to be prepared on. Uh, Likita Perichala has mm -hmm. this question. What type of technical arrangements must I make to make my, to prepare, be prepared for my assessments? Okay, sure. So I'll be happy to share. Uh, while, while you must have seen it on the video that was played, uh, you will need a laptop or a desktop, uh, which must be enabled with webcam and microphone. Uh, webcam should capture image clearly. Both webcam and microphone must be in switch on mode across all assessments and interview stages of our process. We spoke about safe exam browser. That must be installed as well, and it should be functioning successfully. Uh, as far as system requirement is concerned, uh, you know, if I go about talking uh, around RAM and processor, you need, uh, you know, 4 GB plus RAM, uh, i3 fifth generation, 2.2 gigahertz or equivalent or higher laptop or desktop configuration. Uh, operating system, uh, Windows 8 or Windows 10, uh, Mac OS, you know, 10.9, Mavericks or higher. Uh, we will, we suggest you to use Google Chrome as a browser, uh, which is that of a latest version, ideally version 5. Uh, you know, your network VPN or proxy, if you are using anything, should be disabled. Uh, a stable internet connection of 2 Mbps plus speed, uh, you know, uh, through a broadband connection in an ideal uh, environment. Uh, this is what we recommend. Uh, do avoid unstable 3G, 4G networks, etc. Uh, for taking the communication assessment, it is highly recommended that you use a USB enabled headset with a microphone or a good quality headset uh, with you know single jack 3.5 mm, uh, you know having microphone as well. Um, you should avoid using Bluetooth headsets or you should avoid also using system speakers, etc. Also, we don't recommend you taking these assessments on phone or tab or any other technical gadgets apart from laptop or desktop. Sam, back to you. Thanks. Thanks, Rakesh. I, I know that that was a very detailed logistics requirement. And, and uh, to assure, we will also be sharing the list of logistics requirements with you and also with your placement officer. Would you have any questions around it? feel free to reach out to your placement officers and they will get in touch with our recruiters and clarify that. Right, on the next question, again, uh, on the uh, assessments again, so probably Rakesh or uh, Rohit uh, can answer this question. So would I face uh, issues during my assessments or during my interviews? Uh, who do I notify and how do I notify? And if, if the issue is not getting resolved on time, will I get another opportunity? So to supplement that, and also there is a question on like, what are the documents that I should bring for the process? Like, uh, should I carry all my mark sheets 
uh, or or do we do you recommend a list of documents to carry for the process okay okay uh, i'll answer the last part first uh, which is uh, that you only supposed to bring your pan card uh, during the in your admit card uh, admit card during the hiring process right and uh, we will be scanning the admit card at the time of interview stage this only document you need to bring am i right rakesh That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, you are right. Only admit card. That's right. Yes. Yeah. It's recommended that uh, they also carry the COVID ID proof. Yeah, alongside yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sam, can you repeat the first part of the question again? Uh, so, if we face issues during the assessment, so what is the yeah. help options yeah. available, and will I get another opportunity if the issues aren't resolved on time? Yeah. yeah. So we have enabled the. the help desk which would be both uh, live chat as well as uh, help desk uh, number where you can reach out to for any technical support which you are facing during your registration assessment or, or any any stage of assessment okay so the tech support team is your first point of contact for resolution of all technical issues okay now due to any reason that you start you are not able to participate in assessment because of technical issue which uh, you not get able to get resolved in a stipulated time uh we will internally evaluate uh is if we have to get give you a press schedule for assessment but uh the whole purpose behind scheduling help desk is that all the candidates should be able to resolve the tech issues and also set up all the uh, infrastructure at their end much ahead in uh, before we start the assessment so that is expectation we have from all of you is that you will get detailed guideline you will have enough time to enable all the infrastructure at your end uh so please ensure that you reach out to tech support and get the issues resolved thanks rohit and uh, uh, there are a lot of questions coming in from candidates around pan card so i probably would want to summarize couple of questions uh, naimisha uh, has a question like can we submit a e pan card during registrations Amit has a question like, do you accept minor PAN cards? Sudha Gunde uh, has a, a situation where she has applied for a PAN card but has not yet received her PAN card yet. Is PAN card mandated to start with registration? And Sai Kiran Reddy has a question on soft copies. Uh, are soft copies accepted? And Sai Ramya has a question like. can we produce a pan acknowledgement uh, during the registrations so rohit and rakesh probably would be the best persons to answer on this rakesh go ahead sure thank you rohit thank you sam so uh, pan card is a mandatory document and uh, you must have the same uh, at the time of registration through your onboarding right uh, that's that's the government id proof uh, you know which which we are going to refer to through the entire recruiting process e pan card yes you during the registration process you can go ahead and use the e pan card you need to ensure that it's clearly printed uh, it it is it has your photograph your signature etc right and and the other requisite details that are required and are part of the pan card um uh, minor pan card is is not allowed you need to ensure that you have a pan card which is valid uh, and and you know uh, as i said it's a mandatory document um you know and then i think uh, same is the question right so i'm uh, around the soft copy so e pan card i'm assuming is the soft copy uh, or if you are you know or animation is while you are uploading uh, the document it will be a scanned document right so it should be properly scanned uh, you will get all the details as we move forward in the recruiting process but yeah pan card is a mandatory document and you should have one during the registration process um without the pan card we will not be able to move ahead in the accenture recruiting process so in case you have applied for a pan card and you have not received one yet uh i'm sure now given the current uh, process etc you ideally get the pan card in 48 to 72 hours once you have submitted your application so do wait uh you know i i, I am not sure as to when you applied for one but you should get it in 48 to 72 hours and and thereafter you can initiate your registration process similarly uh, you know in in case uh, you know you have not uh, received a pan card or you will not be able to receive it uh, you know we will not be able to go ahead uh, with with your candidate uh, without a pan card 
Sam, I hope I have not missed any of the questions. Uh, let me know. Rakesh, uh, yes, thank you, Rakesh. Like uh, this being a very important aspect, uh, uh, if I may summarize, PAN card is a mandatory uh, document for the recruitment process. Uh, we accept the PAN card or a digital PAN card, but not acknowledgements or minor PAN card or PAN card without uh, photos in it. And when you are applying with us, you need to key in your 10-digit PAN number, which becomes a very important uh, factor for you to successfully register with us. And also remember that when you are uploading a digital uh, copy of your PAN card on the tool, upload only the first page or the first side of your PAN card where your PAN number, your name, and your photograph are very uh, visible clearly. And uh, make sure that the photographs are looking identical. And also while registering, the name of your, uh, your your first name, middle name, last name matches the way that it is available in your bank card. These are some of the requisites that you need to be uh, looking out for while registering the child. And also during on the tool, you also have a help desk uh, link where you can go through the uh, requisites and uh, most questions that might run your mind during registrations are already covered. Uh, go through that uh, in detail and, and start with your registrations process. And also note that the last date to register with us is 29th of September before 5 p.m. And uh, request you all to take this on priority and complete registrations as soon as possible. And uh, with that, we are getting close to the uh, Q&A session and handing over to Rohit. Rohit, would you want to close, uh, have some words of advice for all applicants here? I really appreciate the, all the questions which are coming uh, on the chat window and they're really very really relevant questions. I know that few of the questions may would have not got answered today. And as you start your registration process, you will have more questions in your mind which you would like us to answer. So the, now we will have a college-wise open house session. Where again, you will have opportunity to interact with uh, the recruiters who are aligned to your college. And that group will address any, any specific question you have, either on registration assessment or any other uh, issue you want us to, uh, to address. So ensure that you raise your questions there. And we'll ensure that we provide on-the-spot resolution in case we're not able to provide to quickly drop an email and we'll ensure that your issues are resolved much before you start participating in our assessment process. So thanks to you. Looking forward to uh, uh, to see you in participating in Accenture process and wish you all the best. Thank you all. Me to Rohit and Rakesh for spending time with us and clarifying your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. And all the best, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. Good day, stay safe, and see you soon at Accenture.